Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to read the data from REST API that will be coming in JSON format uh, by using REST connector or we can use actually HTTPS connector. So it depends, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, uh, use the different connectors. It's not a big deal. Depend uh, a REST connector actually give you a little more uh, kind of features uh, that HTTP does not. But anyways, we are going to uh, use the REST connector. I can show you HTTPS as well in some other video. Okay, and uh, right to the Azure SQL database. So, so this is going to be a quick demo where uh, uh, we have uh, uh, some permission from the website uh, where we, we can download some data by using the REST API. Okay, so now what we are going to do, let me show you first uh, the data I'm going to use. And uh, there are tons of uh, free websites. Uh, here is one of that called uh, uh, JSON uh, placeholder. Uh, uh, typecode.com and this has uh, some uh, data that you can get um, so this is uh, uh, if you are interested uh, see right there there is uh, this data is only for single post uh, if you want to get multiple posts you have there you have also users data right there uh, that you want to get uh, so it is uh, available there as well okay now there are some other uh, websites available so this uh, websites uh, uh, this website will provide a list of uh, all those employees uh, they have. Uh, so if I click right there, it provide me this all information. Uh, so there are, uh, uh, looks like uh, 23 uh, 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 employees are there. Okay, so this is the data. Okay, now we can use this one. Why not? So let's uh, play with this guy. And what's going to happen, I'm going to go to the Azure Data Factory and uh, here we are going to start working. Uh, so go to the Azure Data Factory and uh, then uh, we will... Uh, need to open our factory studio once we are there we can create our pipeline go to author and here in the author we are going to create a new pipeline click right there and i can always different people have different choices people create a link services first and then create the pipeline in my case i always go to pipeline and create the pipeline and if there is a link service available i use it otherwise i create it so i'm going to use copy activity and we will go from there now in the copy activity, we are going to go to the source uh, and uh, here we have a uh, data set. Uh, let's create new data sets uh, set uh, and uh, we want to use a uh, rest. So you see right there, I can use rest or uh, I can use uh, HTTP. So that uh, uh, they both are going to serve the same purpose in my scenario. Let's go with the rest for now and uh, click uh, next and uh, go to the new. And here, uh, what we are going to do, do, we are going to provide the base uh, URL. Now, in the authentication, uh, you have basic, you have uh, anonymous, and you have AAD service uh, principal, managed identity, and user assigned managed identity preview. So these are different uh, type of authentications are available. Uh, so in your case, uh, depend from where you are getting this information, uh, they are having created your uh, username and password they might uh, give you, and then you can provide that information. In my case, it's totally free, so I'm going to go with the anonymous. Uh, okay, so uh, certif server certificate validation. So that's also depend upon uh, your uh, pers uh, company who has provided you the URL. Uh, so in my case, I'm fine with the default, what we have here, and I'm going to hit the create. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to click OK. And here, uh, you are going to provide the, the uh, method. In my case, uh, it is, uh, see, the HTTP method allow values are get default and post. So here, you can use get or post. In my case, I'm getting the values, so I'm fine. Also, read these all the information, uh, request timeout, and uh, you have a request interval. So read all that, and if you have to add some more information such as header and all that, you can provide. In my case, I don't have that, so I'm going to just ignore that part. Okay, now we are going to go to the sync here, and we can also actually preview data here. If I click right there, so you see right there, you have this whole data. This is a JSON, and you see there, this is the data I need to read. So. If you see uh, the actual data is the uh, data and then under that uh, these are the uh, elements uh, or a part of uh, the JSON file I need to write. Uh, so I'm going to go and uh, click there. I'll uh, go to the sync right there and in the sync uh, what we can do, uh, go to new and then uh, we are going to go to the blog, uh, actually Azure SQL database. So, so Azure SQL database and I already have a SQL uh, database. 
that I just created. So I'm going to go to the new and uh, my subscription server name, Tech Bridge Server, and then I'm going to select the database called Tech Bridge IT. And uh, in the authentication, I will be providing username, TB user, and then we will provide our password here. Now we are going to hit a test connection and it should be successful as it is. So if we hit create, now we will be ready to go. And uh, it is asking me, hey, do you have any table? I do not have actually any table. And import schema, yes, import from the connection. Hit OK. Now what we can um, play, OK, table or data set. Actually, I, sorry, I don't have actually table. I did not provide, so I'm OK with here. I'm going to go to the, once I have done all that, I'm going to click on auto create table and I'm going to go hit open and here I'm going to go and provide the table name. The schema is going to be DBO and my table is going to be uh, user table. Okay, so that's the name of the table. Okay, we don't have table as of now because you have seen that I have told this create auto. Okay, now we go to mapping and if you see that I have not created any table so I'm going to go to mapping and here I'm going to hit the import schema. Once I click that, it's going to get that uh, JSON information from there, and then uh, we have to see what we can do there. See right there, that's uh, all the columns uh, it got for us. Uh, then it has a message and everything. So I'm going to delete the message. I do not need any message or anything like that. I do not the status, uh, and uh, I am, uh, let's say, uh, add array also deleted so if i delete that entire thing anything under the data will be deleted so what we need we need two things we are going to remove the status we don't need that and then what we are going to do we are going to delete the message rest of that everything what we need we actually does need that so we can go right here and all these guys we need so these are the column names is going to create with the table okay so we are good here and this is the data type it's selected so that's fine if you want to go further like integer 32 and all that you can always go right here and provide like integer 32 or 64 and then you have employee name you can select as a string or right there you know so that's your choice so you know whatever you want to do so I'm, I, I'm gonna leave this rest default you know and uh, then uh, I have these guys uh, uh, this is integer 64 so okay so this looks good now and uh, what we should be doing uh, let me click right there and we will hit the debug it's gonna read the data from the rest API and then it's going to create the table and load the data to it uh, so let's uh, just refresh it got completed real quick so I see right there that's our request that's our sync and auto create table and it has a see that all everything right there so it looks good and uh, let's go ahead and take a look right now so if we go to the our table go to the tech presence and here is the table and it should be user table that's the name we gave so here is a db.user table is there and I can right click here and uh, preview the data see right there it did read all that so it uh, what we were expecting we were expecting uh, tons of records right so maybe I used only one uh, which uh, is, is, is only brought six only one record why is that so so let's go back and take a look here so we are in our pipeline go right there go to source and uh, here in the preview data see right there is uh, that's a 61 so we have the tiger Nixon then why it did not read the other records let me see so do we have any settings that says only read one data row no mapping okay so if I click uh, in the entire collection what will happen so let's uh, see what will happen now and we go back to the source and uh, the sync uh, and say auto create table that means that if the table is not there it's going to create if the table is already there it's not going to do anything so i am going to do one thing i'm going to go ahead and truncate this table so we'll see like uh, there is more data okay so now we don't have any data and i have selected uh, the data 
uh, tab or the collection. Uh, so let's see if uh, this works better. Sometimes I also do not uh, test these things and I experiment uh, while I create the videos. Uh, so it is okay. So you got the idea, you know. Okay, so it is uh, giving us error and it is saying that uh, uh, Microsoft data shared request URL employees too many attempts. Okay, so that's a problem because this website, if I try multiple times, sometimes it will give me error. Okay, so let me do redo one more time. So let me do. I could have actually or should have used another website where we have uh, no restriction on number of requests. But it's a free website, that's why. Okay, so this time it got completed. I'm gonna see, take a look here. See, it uh, one object is red and in that object there are 24 rows. Now we should be good here. Okay, so let's go back here. And then uh, I'm gonna select the data. And this time you have data for everything. So you got it now, right? Because I had not selected or uh, because I, <clears throat> because I had not uh, clicked on that collection so that's why I was not able to see that entire data so it uh, we have to click on here collection reference so once you do that uh, there was the data under that these are the columns and then it's going to bring all the all of them if we did not do it then it got the very first record so that's uh, something to learn as well so this is how you will read the data from the rest api and then write the data to this azure sql database so, so thank you very much for watching um, one more thing I would like to see. Let's go to the table and see what type of column data types is created. So you notice here, wherever we had provided some uh, columns uh, types, uh, it uh, got in uh, into right one, so like such as the uh, ID. So we did uh, like a uh, uh, into sixty four and all that. So it uh, took it as a big int. Uh, so in thirty two will be just fine here. Then we have employee ID and uh, and worker as uh, here is a uh, employee salary it took as a big int. And uh, is uh, employee age big int. This can be like a just integer, or, you know, or even small int, you know. And uh, then uh, depending on that, so I will suggest you if you do something like that, it's a great idea to select the right data types. So, so you will not waste your uh, uh, storage, you know. And uh, just even uh, you are not saving that information. I mean, uh, for uh, age uh, integer thirty. 64 is not even required, you know, so you could have save in a very small uh, type of data type, you know, int even is just fine, even in small int is fine. Anyways, uh, so thank you very much for watching and uh, go ahead and subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.